Hello, welcome to Programming Pokemon. Today, I want to talk to you about how to extend the world objects so that you can get objects that are animated, just like these flowers that I uh, imported. I know the graphics is a little bit... I think some pixels are missing, but never mind. They are animating just fine. So, um, you may recall that we have this uh, world object that has all the actors and all the world objects that we uh, want to uh, update and render in our entire world. So, uh, in our update method, we update every world object, and that's going to be uh, of interest in a while. Uh, let's go into the world objects, because I didn't make a new object, um, and that's really important. I I just extended the world object. Um, so, before we had these two constructors that each take a uh, texture region uh, and then and then store it in this texture variable. Now I've created another constructor that takes an animation and uh, in that case, in the case of the animation, we also get this animation timer float uh, down here. So uh, now our world objects can also be uh, animated. Uh, but how do we figure that out when we are rendering? these objects. Well, the world objects contract with the rest of the uh, program here is that the world object will supply its own uh, textures that it wants to be rendered for it when it's rendered. <coughs> so the renderer just uh, goes through all the objects um, and asks, can I have your sprite? And down here we just check if there's a texture, we get the texture, and if, if not then it must be an animation, right? Uh, the only way to break this is if you initialize one of these world objects with a null uh, constructor here, or a null uh, argument, or parameter. Hmm. Okay, and we're not going to do that. We're definitely not going to do that, so that's this uh, system uh, works. Now there is some uh, some points to make about this, this system. Uh, because I've, I've seen on the internet some people say that it's really bad if you store your texture in uh, an object for instance because you have a, you're gonna have a lot of these objects and if each of them is gonna have their own texture region that's gonna be a bad thing for your uh, memory and the same with the animation now this is this is uh, this is two times as bad because if each of these world objects both have an, a texture region and an animation, then that's really bad. If you have a hundred objects, that's a lot of RAM that you're allocating for just this. Uh, but that's actually that's not happening uh, with this. If you if you make sure uh, when you initialize your world objects that you pass uh, not a new object but a reference to an old object, uh, then that object will live in its own place, and this these are just going to be uh, references. And so even though you create a hundred world objects, you're just going to have a hundred references to the same texture region that's stored one place. In this particular uh, example, it's on our graphics card and not in the, in the RAM, but in the case of Java 2D, it would be the RAM. Yeah. Okay, the other point here is that it's okay to have these variables that are not initialized because um, in the case of the float, that's a uh, a primitive data type, so uh, that has a null value. But this this is an object, so this is just going to be null, and a null at runtime is uh, takes up very little uh, RAM. So it doesn't matter that we have this variable that we're not using. Uh, I believe in the 64-bit JVM, it's 64 bits for a uh, null reference. Or it's just a pointer that points to nothing. Uh, don't crucify me if that's not correct. But null objects are n not a problem. Because our uh, what we could do instead of doing this is uh, extend the world object. And then we would have a maybe an animated world object. And then we'd have a, maybe an, a world object that can have a dialogue. And a world object that is animated that can also have a dialogue. And each of these would have to be their own individual objects and our object uh, hierarchy would just explode and that's really bad as well. So uh, with this approach 
we don't have all these different objects and it's okay to extend functionality in this way in fact I think you should do that whenever you can okay so um, that's fine in uh, in theory but how is that how is that realized well I, I have this uh, small uh, utility here that is not the best way to do it but I have no world uh, loading yet so that's that's how it's gonna be done um, let's see I have these methods here for uh, adding different things to to a world and that's how I built the world that we just saw the demo uh, so if we add a tree then this is how it's this is how it's done uh, so the the tree is not animated so that uses one of these constructors up here and we can see how the uh, texture is passed to that um, down here tree region and the tree region comes from the texture atlas which comes from the asset manager so in in case of in, in this case our resource only lives in the asset manager and it's uh, there's only it's only actually stored one time so we can have a hundred of these trees and it's not going to be an issue for our memory um, in the case of the flowers though uh, that's up here we have the flower animation and that's uh, it it would be uh it would be easy to make a new animation uh every time you make a new flash but don't do that because that's that's going to hurt your ram um instead <laughs> i just scrolled up without saying anything okay so this flower animation uh we pass it this flower animation that we have already prepared and the, and we prepared in here when we initialize the map utility uh we initialize the animation up here and then we, we store it. So this is the only place that this flower animation is actually uh, stored. Now that's a little, that's a that's not a very good design because why is it stored in here, right? Maybe we should have a, a, a special place that we can store all our animations. Um, yeah, the map utility is not a great place for that. I originally wanted to uh, use the asset manager here um, because as all it has this add asset where you can just add any f any file name and a type and an asset but that's unfortunately protected so we can't use the asset manager in this way you can only use it to to load and unload maybe that's a good thing uh, but that means we need a different uh, way to store these animations uh, the same happens with our actors each actor has a an animation set um, but instead of having each actor have its own animation be actors that look the same can just use the same animations in here um, it doesn't matter they won't be desynchronized uh, just because they use the same animation because in libddx animations uh, work with an animation timer that you have to keep track of um, so each object just have to have it own, its own animation timer and you can easily use the same animation uh, great there's one more thing I needed to address oh yeah the update the um, yeah okay so every frame we loop through all the actors in the world and all the objects in the world and we update the objects and the the only update that happens here is that the animation timer is increased by the delta if there is an animation um, but that in theory is a bad idea because our uh, animation timer here is just increased to infinity so if you if you run the program and let it sit for a while for a day or you know that's uh, gonna be a bad time so maybe we want to reset this uh, at some some point uh, but y you can't just reset it uh, naively uh, all the time because well okay let me show you um, we could say that we wanted to animation timer that we wanted to uh, check if it was if this animation timer is longer than the animations duration okay that seems fair if it's longer or equal to the animations duration then maybe we could um oh geez maybe we could decrease it by the animations uh duration 
and then that that wouldn't desynchronize it. Uh, so if we if we went uh, one second over the animation duration, it would go back to uh, one second. So we don't desynchronize it. Okay, that seems fair, right? Uh, however, these flowers utilize uh, a flag uh, in the libgdx animation called ping pong. I don't know if you saw that. I can show you it again. Play mode. Here, play mode. But play mode ensures that you can't just use that trick that I just used because uh, a it needs to be linear, okay? And it's really not. So so now we don't get this ping pong because I just chose to reset. So even if you go on the f on the libgdx forums, I tried that. I believe it's here. Animation state time overflow. What happens? Uh, shouldn't we reset it? Uh, and the the consensus is just yeah you can reset it if you want to maybe at some point um, but you know f generally in this world object where we don't know what kind of animation we're we're using I I think it's better to just uh, don't do anything about it if we uh, if we do something with our world all of our objects should just be uh, reset maybe have a reset method in here that you um hit every time that you uh reload the world wow that's that's a really bad way to say it uh what I'm trying to say is that in practice this is not really an issue. Just make sure that your world objects don't stick along for hours and hours on end um and that is it. It's a really really a short video, but this is. Uh, simple functionality and we get these animated uh, world objects now if if uh, if you want you can extend this functionality to um, dialogues you can you can have a dialogue in each world object if you want to all right that was uh, that's my explanation and uh, <laughs> insight into the discussion of how to how to do this the correct way thank you for watching my video